All right, so thank you again for joining us. This is just a little overview of what we're going to be covering. As I mentioned, we are going to be looking at using this free software to save citation information. We'll look at organizing it a little bit. And of course, using the software to create your own in-text references and bibliography. Um, and of course, in addition to these demonstrations, at the end of the session, we can show you where you can download Zotero and create your free Zotero account. And there is another, um, there's a useful website or two that we really want to point out. And I know one of the things that people have been interested in is moving from InNote Web, uh, a similar product, over to Zotero, which is what we're going to be focusing mostly on today. Can I ask really quickly, has anybody uh, been using InNote in the past to gather citation information? Okay, um, thanks. So for those of you who have been using InNote, um, definitely uh, Steph and uh, Summer and maybe a little bit um, Mark as well, are you interested in the very end at seeing how to get your references out of InNote, InNote Web, and get them into Zotero in case you've invested a lot of your time or energy in gathering citation information in that different product? I would be. Great. OK. So we will definitely include that as well. And we want to make sure that everyone has a chance to ask questions, too. Um, so you know, feel free to type something or um, speak up, especially if one of us gets um, super chatty, <laughs> one of the presenters um, during the session. But we'll also have time for questions at the end. So that said. I'm going to start sharing a browser so that you can see Zotero. All right, so can, can you see um, the Firefox browser now? And give me a little chat or an emoticon. Great, OK. So I'm going to show you what Zotero looks like. So um, I'm here in Firefox, and if I look up in the top right-hand corner, I see this little Z. I'm going to click on that to open the Zotero program inside Firefox. And when I do that, a panel opens up at the bottom of my browser. And it has a couple of different things in it. Um, you'll notice that the main part, the biggest um, part of this panel, is a list. So this is. Um, this is a Zotero instance where we've already added some citation information. And we can reorganize the list by clicking on the top by title, by year, by creator, if we want to. We get basic information on each item that's been uh, collected here. And of course, if we click on it, over here on the side, we get more detailed information. And I could actually click on each of these fields over on the right side if I wanted to change that, if I wanted to update the information or change it in any way. And over here on the left side of the panel, that's kind of the organizational area. You'll notice that the default um, thing is sort of my library. That's my overall um, collection. But I can create subfolders in there if I want to. One of the things that you'll find if you start using a product like this to gather citation information is you might end up with 50 references or 100 references, and that gets a little overwhelming to go through in a big list. So um, one of the things that we sometimes do is say, look, come into your library. You might want to um, click on this little folder icon to create a new folder. Um, whatever topic you might be researching. You should get a pop-up box, and you can type into it, type a title, and then you'll have an empty folder, and you can save references to it. And at the top, there are lots of other commands, actually, right above <laughs> the Zotero area. And you will notice that there's a gear icon. That's to go to preferences, and Kelsey's going to show that to us in a little bit. And there are some other commands up here, create new item, um, a little search that you can do. But I want to pause here for just a minute and ask, is this making sense to everybody? 
in order to access Zotero, I clicked a little Z in Firefox, and it opened the Zotero panel inside my browser so I can see citations that I've already saved. And we're going to show you how to save citations and gather them in just a minute. Okay, those are really good questions. Um, Zotero does work with other browsers. I am with, apologies, I was going to show this at the very end, but okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hijack this a little because that's such a good question. I'm going to go to Zotero.org and I'll click on um, just the download button to show you the other systems that Zotero works with the most. So um, I personally like Zotero for Firefox. I think it works really well. You can save your citations and view them right within your browser. But if you're a fan of Chrome or Safari, you can use it with those browsers as well. Um, you would just run Zotero separately um, if you wanted to use Chrome or Safari. And let's see, how did you get the Z to click on in Firefox? Okay, that's also a good question. <laughs> um, and at the end, I'll go over this a little more, too. If you go to www.zotero.org and you click on Download, then um, this is the area where you download the Zotero software. And it will also help you set up your free account. And it will try to um, figure out which browser you're using. So you'll notice I'm in Firefox, so it's highlighting the options for Firefox. But there are other options there. Okay, so we've done a basic introduction to um, what Zotero looks like, a quick view of where you can go to get it. Um, I did show you how to create a folder. Does anybody have any other questions about just this portion of it? Okay, I'm going to ask Emily to um, come over here, and she's going to show you all how to gather the citation information. Okay, um, Leah and I just did a quick seat switch. Um, so everybody can still see Firefox, and I am actually going to create a new folder just to make things easier for the people who are coming after me. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to add, cit add citations into Zotero. And this is probably 90% of what you're going to be using the program for. It's a really good storage facility for citations that you are going to use or maybe you're just considering to use. And Zotero makes it really, really easy to do that. So I'm going to show you how to get a citation from our catalog and from a database, Academic Search Complete. And I am going to also show you how to make one from just a blank web page that doesn't have any Zotero information. So we're going to do the catalog first. And for some reason, when I am doing examples, I can only ever think of the Hunger Games. So I'm going to use that as an example. Sorry about the typing sound. And when you are adding records from a website, um, it helps to go into the actual record, because if we were actually going to use Zotero on this page, it would save every single citation here. So we're going to click into the Hunger Games. And then up here in this URL bar, we have a little button here that looks like a book. And you're going to click that. And it's going to automatically save all the information in the book record into Zotero. So as you can see, it's got all of the relevant information, like the title, the author. It's even got the abstract. Um, Zotero will save ISBNs and things like that. And it'll tell you where you got it from. So it'll help you find that record again if you click WorldCat. You can also edit this information. So like Leah mentioned, if you click series, you could put, you know, one of four or something like that. Um, Zotero picks up on all the information that's in the record, so sometimes you will have to change or edit things if you know um, where it's from. Okay, now we are going to go to a database. Like I said, academic search complete. 
A lot of you are probably already familiar with databases. Um, so I'm just going to search Hunger Games again. And again, you're going to want to click into the record just so it saves everything that you need. And again, up here in the URL bar, it's going to have that little icon. This time it looks like a page. That's odd. <laughs> Sometimes it'll do weird things, but that's technology. Okay, and so it saved the article information for us. And one really cool thing about database um, Zotero saving is that if it has the full text in the database, it will save that PDF for you. So that'll be saved on the online server and on your computer if you're using Zotero standalone. And again, you want to look at the information on the right side. Um, databases tend to have really good information for their records. So you're probably going to have everything that you need right here but you can still edit it and change um, things that you need to change. And it'll give you a URL, it'll give you a DOI if it has one. It's just super useful. But um, for things that do not have that button, there is also a really useful Zotero function. So you'll notice that this homepage for Suzanne Collins, the author of Hunger Games, does not have that little icon up in the URL bar. So what you're going to do for that is you're going to go down here, and this little page with a plus sign is going to say create web page item from current page. And what that is going to do is it's going to take all the information that it can find, including the URL so that you can go back and maybe the date you accessed it, things like that, and it's going to make a very basic Zotero citation for you. This is definitely an instance where you're probably going to want to come back and edit all this information, especially since, you know, websites don't have obvious authors and things like that. But it's still a really good start for making a citation for a web page that doesn't necessarily have all the information that Zotero can pick up on. All right. So now I am going to teach you what I think is maybe just the quickest way to create a bibliography with Zotero. It's not the only way, but I think it's the quickest way. So you're going to select what you want to include in your bibliography, and then you're going to right-click it. There's a bunch of options here, but down here at the bottom, there's Create Bibliography from Items. Here you can choose what kind of citation style you want it to be in. Our um, default here is APA. You're going to choose what kind of output mode that you want, which is citations or bibliography. And then you can save how you want it to be output. So you can save it as an RTS, HTML. Um, you can copy it to your clipboard in case you want to just paste it right into Word or something. Or you can just print it. So I'm going to save it to H. No, I'm going to save it to RTS. I'm going to save it to the desktop so that we can find it easily. I am going to switch real quick so that you can see the desktop. Yep, sorry, I was sharing Firefox, not the desktop. <laughs> okay, let's see. One second. And you guys do have a question. Um, in case you didn't see it, and I don't know the answer, so maybe one of you ladies does now. If you change universities, is it possible to auto-update the links for URLs as they are linked to UNCG's access to databases? Not that we know of. Um, in that case, you probably are going to have to utilize that manual uh, edit. In you may have to go back um, in your own databases, you know, uh, wherever you get a job or go back to school or anything like that and um, get those proxy links from them for those articles. But if you have the articles um, and Zotero has access to the full text, it will save the PDF for you. So you won't be losing the article necessarily if you have that PDF. It just might prove to be a little bit difficult in the transition.
Mm. Mark, um, so when uh, you select your items that you want in your bibliography, you would right click them and it's down at the bottom there, create bibliography from items. Okay, so I'm actually going to move on from the bibliography just because <laughs> Blackboard Collaborate is being a little bit difficult in trying to switch from Firefox to the desktop. And I am going to let Kelsey talk in just a sec. Um, I just want to remind you that the record generated by Zotero is only as good as the information that's been applied to the record where you get it. So articles from databases will probably have really good records just because databases apply a lot of information to their records, whereas maybe websites won't have a lot, especially if it's the kind that doesn't have the little icon next to it. And on that note, um, since I wasn't able to show you an actual citation, I want to mention that you should actually check your citations that are generated. Um, because they're not always going to be 100% correct. They're usually pretty good, but it could be an issue, and you just want to double check those, as always. So I'm going to let Kelsey talk now. All right, this is Kelsey now, and you should be able to see my screen. So now that we've talked about collecting our citations, I'm going to talk to you more about putting them into action. Uh, one of the first things you'll want to do with Zotero is to set your account to sync. Syncing allows you to access your library on any uh, computer with internet access. You'll be able to view your library from anywhere at Zotero's website, and this also syncs with your desktop version. So it's really helpful to set your account to sync automatically. In order to sync your account, you'll just go to this gear button right here, and you'll see the preferences option. From here, you can customize Zotero in many ways, but at the top, you'll see the sync icon. Uh, this is where you want to log in with your username and password, as well as set Zotero to sync automatically. Keep in mind that although Zotero has this great syncing feature, you also have the option to back up your files, which I would recommend as well, just as a precaution. Really quick, while we have this preference screen open, I also want to show you this site tab. I'm going to demonstrate how the Word plugin works, but I also want to point out the styles. So if you're using a more obscure citation style, such as uh, Turabian, you can use this Get Additional Styles to add it. Uh, Zotero does come preloaded with our most common styles, but just in case, that's where you can come back and add more styles. Okay, so now it's time for my favorite feature of Zotero. We've saved all our bibliographic information, and let's put it into practice. When you're actually writing a paper, Zotero has a plugin that you can download to cite as you write. One thing I do want to mention is that you must have Zotero open when using this feature, whether in Firefox or in your standalone. So moving into our Word document, we've got this sample paragraph to play with. In the top ribbon, you have your add-ins button. And this is where you'll actually see Zotero's plugin after you've downloaded it. So we have the option to add and edit citations and our bibliography. I'm going to add an in-text citation first. And since I'm using APA, I'll put my cursor at the end of the sentence before the punctuation. And then I'll just go here to add citations. So I'm given this uh, red toolbar to work with. And I can either search by author or even title, and then just click the one I'm looking for. So typing Hunger Games, say I'm citing the book, click this here, and it's generated my citation. So just click Enter, and it puts it where my cursor was. All right, so let me show you one more. Let's search by uh, title this time. I can remember the title, the games people play. Here we go. So that's a good option um, if you're like me and you can't remember the author's name or sometimes even the um, title of the article. But it's just generated the citation and put it in there for me. 
So let's pretend that I need to now edit this citation. This is an article, and maybe I only used uh, one page from this article. So I clicked in my citation, and I'm going to go up here to this edit button. It brings back up this red box. And if I click the citation, I can add additional details, such as my page. So it's page 25. Enter again. Enter. And now you'll see it's added that page number. Okay, so I've added my citations. I'm ready for my bibliography. I can go to the bottom of my document, just like I would if I was actually writing a paper. I want it on a new page. And I'll go to the top up here to generate my bibliography. And so you can see it pulled through the citations that I'd used earlier and made my bibliography for me. And again, I have this option up here to edit the bibliography if there was anything that I needed to change. So let's now pretend that I wrote my paper in APA and then I checked the assignment and my professor actually wanted MLA. I can use this bibliographic management button. And I can change my citation style to MLA. So again, there are lots of options in Zotero, many different things to play with. And I think you'll really love the word plugin feature. I'm going to turn this back over to Leah for question and answer time. Hey, thank you so much, Kelsey. All right, so how are y'all feeling so far about the um, using the commands in Microsoft Word to create your in-text citations and your bibliography? I'm going to look really quickly at the questions at the chat box, but also feel free to activate your microphone if you want. Okay, okay, good question. Um, so we've got a couple of questions. Emily's going to speak a little bit to the um, Mac side of things. Okay, um, yeah, so on the Mac, um, assuming that you are using the Firefox plugin, um, it may be on the left, per se, um, per se, uh, perhaps, and it could, I mean, it's going to have the same icon. It's going to be a big Z, but it might be in a different position. Um, if you're using maybe the Safari plugin, um, that'll be on the left, and it won't be the same as the Firefox version. It won't be operating in the browser. It'll be a little um, extension that will allow you to just save things from Safari into Zotero standalone, which you would also need on your computer. <laughs> So um, Kelsey and I uh, are playing around with Steph's question about Mark and Mark, and there is a way to do it um, where you just insert the year, and you guys, I think, can still see our screen here, but um, I can't exactly remember which option it is. Isn't that fun when you're trying to explain something? Um, so let's try the... Play. Okay, so whenever I then added this, then if I click on it in that little V, so if I click on it, I can click Suppress Author, um, and and it suppressed my author, so it just has the 2014 in there. So. That was Steph, right? Steph, hopefully that does that answer your question. Thank you, ladies, very much. Um, sorry, I was playing around with things on this end too, but good answer. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to 
uh, moving EndNote web files to Zotero. I know we have several people who have been using EndNote, and you might want to know how to get the information you've already saved in the other products over to Zotero if you decide you like um, Zotero and want to start using it. Sorry for the blank time. Just take me a minute to get this going. Talk amongst yourselves. All right. So um, I'm sharing Firefox now. And I know I've clicked a couple of steps ahead already. But um, can you all see a browser? that says EndNote at the top. OK, that sounds good. So just to remind you, if you have been using um, EndNote Web, this is an application that UNCG has been providing access to. Um, and we are going to be providing access up until June. So you're still going to have um, some time with your accounts if you have invested a lot of time and energy into saving things here. And after that, we're not going to be providing this. So definitely, if you've been using UNCG Access, this is the time to start thinking about other products. And Zotero we've been, that we've been discussing is an alternative that you can think about. Um, or if you're new to the university and you're at another institution and you no longer have access to their citation management products, um, again, you might think about bringing things over um, into Zotero, which is a free product. And one of the things that I think is great about Zotero, not just the features, the fact that it's kind of institution neutral. You get your account, you start saving things um, to it, and you can take it from place to place with you. So for those of you who have been using EndNote Web, the URL to get into your account is going to be www.myendnoteweb.com. And once you log in, you should be able to come to, let's see, the Format tab, and then choose Export References. And you'll have some choices here. You'll notice um, that there are some labels under here. These are folders that I've created inside my EndNote web account. Um, you also have all references in my library. So you have a choice. You could, uh, you could export your references folder by folder so that you save that organizational scheme. If you have a few particular products or projects that um, you have saved references to, and you want to keep them separate. You want to know which citations are in which folder. You might want to export them folder by folder. But you certainly could export all the references at once. I am going to export um, this folder called cc and &E. And then I'm going to get a choice as to what type of file do I want to get. The ref man um, is RIS export is going to be the best one. RIS is one of the file types that are um, that works well with a lot of different citation management products. So um, that's the one I'm going to choose. And I am going to click Save. And I'll just talk you through this in case you get, um, in case I click too quickly. So I get a choice to open or save the file. It's being called export. Um, dot txt. So um, actually, I think I am going to open it with Notepad, which, sorry, that is going to be in another application. But just so you know, if I export the file and I open it with something like Notepad, I can rename it using the name, the CCME that I originally called my folder. And I do up here in my browser, you'll notice I do still have that Z up there. And I still have my Zotero panel in here. So I can come to the gear icon and choose import. And then browse to where I've saved the file. 
and then hit open, and it should import uh, the file that I just saved. All of the citations that I chose to export should show up with the name that I gave them um, as a folder in my library. So down here in Zotero, you'll see the references, um, the list of references that I had. And I can edit them here now. Um, and I can move them around a little bit if I want to. Are there any questions about that process? Okay, that sounds good. We definitely um, wanted to give everybody a quick introduction to Zotero, including wrap-up, with plenty of time left over at the end for questions. So definitely forge on ahead with that. And there is, um, there is a little bit of wrap-up that we'd like to do, just to bring it all together and show you some other resources. And definitely start thinking of um, other questions that you might have or anything that you might want to know. I am going to take us out to the library website now. And the first, um, the first kind of wrap-up thing that I'd like to show you is a library guide to Zotero. So the things that we've talked about and even some more advanced things are on one of our library guides. And if you're familiar with our library.uncg.edu, you probably know that we have research guides that have recommendations for different subjects, it's research guides by subjects. You might not realize that if you scroll down this list under nursing and several education areas and um, psychology, there are additional resource guides. Okay, good question. Megan, can you easily import PDFs you have saved on my computer into Zotero? Yes, absolutely. I'll show that in just a minute. It's um, easy and fun. I'm going to scroll down this list of, um, of research guides, and here we have the library guide to Zotero. And if you want this URL, I'll pop it into the chat box there. Um, but this guide really has some um, basic information on Zotero on this home tab. Getting more help. There are lots of in-depth guides out there that have even more than this. There's some information on installation and setup. One thing that I do want to point out while we're talking is um, it is a good idea to back up your Zotero files. The work that we've been doing here is by default saved locally on the computer. And since we have created our free online Zotero account and we've synced our, um, we've put that account information into preferences and, and synced our account, um, it is periodically going to upload the information that we save to our online account. But the Zotero developers do say that's not, um, that's not a substitute for backing up data, like saving your Zotero files to library or files to an external hard drive or some other device. So especially if you're going to be using Zotero for something like writing a dissertation or um, you know, a journal manuscript, it's, it's a good idea to look at that and check into the backup. And I just want to show really quickly, I'd love to respond to that question about PDFs because I think that was a great question. Um, I'm going to resize Firefox a little bit. And I'm going to look around for some PDFs on my desktop. Sorry, you'll notice some blank spots while I move things around a little bit. If you do happen to have a bunch of PDFs sitting on your computer, maybe you've collected some PDFs in a folder, or you just have some sitting around, if they were created by a publisher, um, then uh, it is pretty easy to not just import them, but add some citation information to them. So I am going to create a new folder, and I'll call it PD, new PDFs, I guess. 
And can everybody still see my Firefox window? No. Oh, no. Okay. I lost people when I went clicking around. I shouldn't have, or I went, when I went resizing things. Okay. Let me move this back. How's that? Is that a little better? Yay. Okay. I'm back. <laughs> okay. So um, I've highlighted this folder that I want to add PDFs to. And I'm just going to drag a bunch of PDFs that I happen to have on my computer in there. It's just grab them and drag them over the folder where you'd like to add them. And boom, they're there. And I am going to try to include some that I believe were created by a publisher because it's pretty neat to add, um, to do this um, sort of thing. If you already have a citation in your library, I am going to click around a little here. I'm going to find a citation, for instance, examples. Um, say, if I want to add a PDF to this citation here, the, maybe the home page by Susan Collins. But I'm going to pretend this is an article reference. And I'm going to pretend that when I hit the down arrow, oh, I don't see a PDF logo there. So pretending this is an article with no PDF attached. If I wanted to attach a PDF, I could just um, manually grab it from my computer, and I should be able to drag it on top of this reference until it's highlighted. Oh, and it should appear there. I just dropped it into the folder, I believe. So um, this PDF is now copied into my Zotero files. And if I close that arrow, I won't see it anymore. But um, it is attached to that. So say this is the PDF for this article. I already have a reference here. That's great. And as I was kind of implying earlier, um, if I have just a big pile of PDFs, I can, uh, I can click on them. And I'm trying to think, I think I have a bunch of homegrown PDFs, things that I scanned myself or other people did. Or, but um, we'll give it a try. You can um, highlight PDFs. And if you right click on them, you can choose retrieve metadata for PDFs. And Zotero is going to go online. It will try to use Google Scholar to find citations for these PDFs. Which is interesting. It looks like it's finding um, some of them. It's usually, as I say, a pretty high success rate if these are published journal articles and not just something that it won't really work if I was creating a Word document and I saved it as a PDF, but formally published things it does work with. Was everybody able to see that OK? I know I clicked around quite a bit. But just you can always just drag a PDF into your Zotero list. And if you want to um, try to have Zotero create a citation for it, right click on it and choose Add uh, or Search for Metadata. OK, while it's doing that, I'm going to go to the other site that I wanted to. Oh, good. I'm so glad that worked. I'm going to go to Zotero.org, because I want to make sure that we have a handle on this kind of free software there. Let me move this down a little bit. OK, so Zotero.org is the site where you actually get the software, um, as I mentioned earlier. You certainly can go to download now, and that's where you get the different options. If you do like want to try, excuse me, if you do want to try using Zotero within Firefox, which is what we've been demonstrating, I think it's simple. I think it works great. It's definitely the path I'd recommend. You've got two downloads that you would want to um, get. The first one is Zotero for Firefox. That's going to um, install this little Z into Firefox. Um, that will open this panel down here where you can see your citations and organize them. There is another download. It'll be a plugin for Word so that you get those Zotero commands in Microsoft Word so that you can create your in-text references and your bibliography. And of course, if you want to go another route, there are definitely other versions. And other things that are 
on this site that you might want to know about, register, create your free account. Um, you'll be prompted to do that, but you can always come here um, and create your free account or, or log in. And there is some really good documentation here. Um, the developers have very good guides. There's also a user forum, and it's wonderful for question and answer if you need help that's a little more advanced. So these were kind of the main things that we wanted to cover. Um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna stop the sharing really quick and come back to the let's go back to the whiteboard. So those are um, the basics we wanted to make sure everybody had a hold of. Here are some of the helpful links, and we can email this PowerPoint out to people. Does anybody have any other questions at this point, or do the other presenters have anything they want to add? Hi, good question, and you're welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Um, yes, if you have Zotero installed on multiple computers, um, what you want to do, well, the basics, you know, whether you want to use multiple computers or not, you, we really, really recommend that you create that free Zotero account and get your username and password into your sync preferences so that you can get your references and your PDFs uploaded online. And then, of course, um, if you are working on different computers, say you go to a uh, you come back to work in your office versus working at home. Just install Zotero um, at the new location and go to your sync preferences and put your account, username and account in there and you should be able to have access to your stuff. There is a limit for attachments such as PDFs and notes and I'm trying to remember what it is. Does anybody remember off the top of their head? Can you repeat the question? Yes. Um, I was wondering, there was a really good question about whether PDFs would be accessible in all the different places someone wants to use them. And I said, yes, um, as long as you sync your account, you should have all of your citations. But I think there is a limit on the storage, um, the amount of storage that you have for attachments like PDFs. Yes, there is. Um, I want to say that it, let me see if I can follow it quickly. It's two something. <laughs> two, let's see here. Yes, that's that in fact. All right. File storage. We're looking at the uh, 300 megabytes of free storage. Yes, that's right. And you can, if you wanted to pay, you could upgrade your storage. There's an upgrade storage button. The, the library and UNCG currently aren't paying for anything. But if you wanted on your own to pay for more storage for more PDFs or more storage space, you could. And I just wanted to add um, something to that answer. Um, a lot of us are used to the cloud now, but it's not quite the same thing because you do have to make sure that you click that sync button. It's not going to upload to the server automatically. So just be really careful when you're done with Zotero to click sync because otherwise it's not going to show up anywhere. That's a good point. I'm going to turn on, um, I'm going to go back to Firefox so that you can see really quick. I don't think we pointed this out, but it's good to know that, um, okay. Oops. So, um, sorry I'm clicking around so much, but if you look at the bottom here where we have the, uh, the Zotero panel, um, there's a little sync with Zotero server button. It's a little circular arrow. 
um, over here in the right hand corner. And of course you can set your sync preferences to sync automatically and it should sync periodically, but this is kind of your manual sync button. There we go. All right, well, thank you again for coming. We really appreciate it. We're going to um, we're going to stick around here for just a few minutes, um, just in case there are other questions. And then we will be posting the recording on that uh, library guide for Zotero. And we will send the PowerPoint out to people. So, and we'll send the recording link with it. You're welcome. Thank you so much.